this is not what we really want. And uh, it's all about clarity on this show. It's very important for us, to, for our viewers to understand the concepts we are talking about. So in today's conversation, I want to talk about no dark business loans, seven massive mistakes to avoid so you can get a huge loan the first time around. Don't go anywhere. You're going to love today's conversation. I guarantee it. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Soda Kiwi Show. How are you today? I hope you're all doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous, if you're to ask me. If you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka and let's roll. <laughs> In today's conversation, I want to talk about no dark business loans, seven big mistakes to avoid so you can get a huge loan the first time around. The first mistake is loan proceeds, so no clarity on the use of funds. It's really important when you apply for a no dark business loan that you have clarity on uh, the loan proceeds. In other words, you need to explain to the lender what you're going to use the money for. It's really important because lenders have uh, different requirements, sometimes uh, regulatory, uh, regulatory requirements to know what kind of um, proceeds, what kind of uh, purposes a business is going to use the money for okay so simply because you have no doc you don't no documentation business loan doesn't mean you need to, you have a no um, no obligation to explain the use of loan proceeds is really important so the thing here is that make sure that you clarify that during the loan application when they call you in other words when they uh, when, when you fill out the form that's for that's not number one if uh, the company calls you to to know more do not ghost them and I don't care if you have, uh, let's say you have good credit or poor credit, doesn't matter. You have to be really clear about that, okay? So when we talk about use of loan proceeds, there are a lot of uh, purposes that are legal when it comes to using the money, okay? You can use the money to purchase real estate or expand operations, okay? You can use the money to purchase equipment. You can use the money to purchase inventory, okay? You can use the money to increase working capital. And, and the thing here is that obviously this list is not exhaustive. There are a lot of ways you can use the money for, to, for, to uh, take care of your business. But the, 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 uh, the purpose must be related to your business and it must be legit. So make sure that you clarify that. You clarify that to the lender. But you yourself, you yourself must be clear about how you have to use the money. And the thing is, do not underestimate how important this is you might be thinking oh well this is basic this is this is self-evident no it's not it's not self-evident we have actually filed tens of thousands of uh, loan applications on behalf of clients and we've seen this time and again people have no idea what they what they're going to use their money for so mystic number one no clarity on use of funds mystic number two we are talking about credit rating not knowing your credit ratings. I'm talking about personal and business. Okay, when we talk about a no documentation business loan, this doesn't mean that you you have to actually, uh, you, you don't have to provide a, a credit rating. So the lender is gonna pay attention to your personal credit score, but also your business credit score if you have if you have one, okay? So it's really important that, so the mistake of not knowing your personal credit ratings before applying for a business loan may lead to a, a loan denial if your credit has issues that you may not be aware of, right? This is really important. So the credit reports clearly outline how dependable you are when it comes to payment of your loan, okay? And just credit card debts, business loans, personal loans, just loans in general, okay? So it's really important to make sure that your, your scores or accurate okay so before you apply for a no doc business loan please check double check triple check your credit ratings and again i want to emphasize that you have to do this both at the personal level and at the business level personal level you want to go to a website called annualcreditreport.com where you can actually you have a right once 
once a year to download a, a free copy of your credit reports and score from TransUnion, Equifax, and uh, Experian. It's free. Now you also can uh, you can sign up for a service that allows you to monitor your credit all year long without it, with, with, without paying a dime. You can go to Nerd Wallet, Wallet Hub. Okay, you can actually go to Credit Karma, or you can go if you are if you have uh, actually you don't have to be a a card holder. You can sign up for a service from Discover, from Capital One. They allow you to monitor your credit. So that's on the personal side. If you want to check your business credit, you first of all you need to sign up with uh, Don and Bradstreet. You need to get your Don's number. Okay, and uh, actually those are credit bureaus. I'm talking about Don and Bradstreet. I'm talking about Experian and I'm talking about Equifax. They allow you actually to, I mean, you have to pay something, but they allow you to check your credit rating. In other words, you want to have what kind of information they are archiving on your behalf. They are archiving on your company. So I really uh, recommend you, and this is something we have done research on. It's really, really important that you have a clear idea of what your credit is before applying for a, a no doc business loan. Mystic number three, business plan. Not having a business plan. This is a biggie, boss. This is a biggie. Actually, this is a, the thing is people believe that when we say no doc business loan, that's just like, you know, I'm just applying for a, a business loan and I don't have to, I don't have to provide anything. Come on, boss. Come on. Can you imagine somebody giving you a $100,000 or $200,000 or, or a quarter of a million or half a million without, without documentation? Come on, there has to be a minimum. There has to be something that you have to show that shows that you are indeed a legit business. You are a viable business because the lender is interested in your ability to repay the loan. Think about that. So that kind of that really makes sense that they are clear about where the cash flows, where the where the money is coming from. So no business plan is a is a is a is a, a no no. It's a big no no. You got to have a business plan. Okay very important boss okay big decision time big decision time do you currently have a business plan are you looking for a no doc business loan whether you're looking for a no documentation business loan a low doc business loan because we have no doc and we have low doc or you're just looking for a regular documentation business loan you got to have a business plan to actually beef up your chances of being approved let's be real here right let's be let's be real I'm not saying the business plan is going to make you be approved. It's going to help you be approved in general, but not having it may disqualify you. Not having it may actually lend less credibility to your file. So it's a, it's just such a cheap thing to do. One fifty, two hundred dollars, two hundred fifty. Just hire someone online on Fiverr or done it. Or you can go to uh, uh, Upwork. You can go to um, Freelancer.com, TopTal, and so on and so forth. Okay, you hire someone and they just take care of it. Or you hire somebody locally, somebody who understands your business. Okay, somebody who understands uh, your business, the trains in your industry. Okay, or if you have talent, you can actually write this yourself. Okay, or you can just uh, buy um, business plan software to actually do this. So you have live plan, you have biz plan, you have uh, end loop. So there are a lot, of, a lot of software tools out there that allow you to do that. Okay, so why are business plan important? For several reasons. They provide a clear outline of, of action for yourself if you want to reach your goals. It is also good because it provides clarity for our lenders and investors, okay? And uh, the, the, the good thing is that business plans are also critical because they establish a clear timeline of when a company can expect to achieve goals, okay? They offer a clear way to track progress as a company grows. This is really important. And it allows lenders and investors to see the viability of a company. So there are 10 important components of a business plan, 10 important ones. I'm talking about an executive summary, business description, market analysis and strategy, marketing and sales plan, competitive analysis, management and organization description, products and services description, the operating plan, the financial projection and needs, and the, uh, the exhibits and appendices. Mystic number four, financials. This is also a biggie. So not having updated financial records, 
The thing is, you don't need to show the lender this documents because the loan is no documentation. However, you need to try to maintain accurate financial reports for yourself. Boss, I'm talking about you for yourself and your business. Because if you if you run if you're running a business and you have no idea of what's going on internally in terms of the numbers, you just uh, you just making mistakes. You just uh, I mean, you just playing like you, 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 you are really, really, really making a big mistake, honestly. And I, I can't go to that level. I can't let you do that. So if you're running a business and I don't care, I don't want you to have a complicated process in place and a complicated accounting process in place. You don't have to if you don't have the resources for that or if your organization does not demand that. The thing is, you got to have a basic way to track what comes in, what goes out right expenses revenue that's just the basic the basic uh, accounting uh, requirements here okay and again you don't have to uh, do this uh, you can have a software where you just track your expenses or if you or if you just want to have a basic way of doing things create an excel spreadsheet but you got to create an excel spreadsheet because not having a not having a proper accounting process carries consequences, bears consequences in terms of uh, regulation because some industries are, are really regulated. In terms of taxes, it, it, you know, if uh, God forbid your ass got audited, if your your ass gets audited by the IRS or the, the, the state tax authorities, you might get in trouble. So we don't want that, okay? It's important to have proper financials. Again, I'm not saying you have to actually provide these financial records to the lender, but this, those are for yourself and those are for regulators. Money, 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 money. The financials will help you see the, the level of money in your business. I'm talking about your cash position. It, let me give you an example. If you actually uh, take a statement of uh, a financial statement, like the cash flow statement, this statement shows the cash inflows and cash outflows from operating activities, financing activities, and invest in activities so those are really important for you to know what's really going on so financial reporting can help your business identify your success identify business opportunities build trust expand your business right help reduce your tax burden very important help during tax time I've said this before and reduce errors and mistakes okay it's important so how often should you prepare financial reports it really depends on you basically monthly Quarterly and yearly is important. Okay, again, for you to have an idea of what you go or where you're going, there is no one size fits all approach when it comes to preparing and analyzing the financial reports. Okay, so it's really up to you. But again, we are recommending that you do this. You do this thing on a monthly basis, quarterly basis, and annual basis. <music> Mistake number five, having the wrong loan. So applying for the wrong type of loan. Yeah, I hear you. You're probably, la you're probably laughing right now, but this is for real. People are making this mistakes. People are applying for a loan that they're, they're not supposed to because, see, the thing is when you are looking for a no-doc business loan, maybe you're just thinking about having money. You just want you, you you just want some cash to take care of uh, stuff in the business. You just want to uh, you just want to have some liquidity to, to to expand the business. But if you are applying for the wrong type of loan, your chances of being denied are high. Okay, so you you have to be very careful here. So first of all, you have to identify the needs, and you have to identify how to actually close the gap created by that need. Sometimes you can have a, collateral, a collateralized loan. Sometimes you don't have a collateralized loan. In other words, you can, you can apply for an unsecured loan. Now, let me just say this. In case you haven't actually understood it so far, when we talk about a no-doc business loan, usually if you, have a, if you don't want to provide any documentation at all, you better have a high credit score. Okay, that's number one. A high personal credit score and a high or a high business score because the lender wants to see something that's number one number two they might check your liquidity level by asking you to connect them to your bank statements okay so be prepared to do this so when we talk about no doc it doesn't mean no doc at all I mean, it just means that you don't have to prove income for instance okay but your business has to be legit so in other words you might be required to provide licenses and permits 
depending on uh, the, your industry. So applying for the wrong type of loan is uh, a big mistake. And so when we talk about choosing a business loan, how do you do that? Well, first you have to nail down why you need a loan. You have to be clear about that. Let me ask you a question, boss. Big decision time, big decision time. Have you nailed down the reason why you need the loan in the first place, why you needed the loan in the first place? Talk to me about that. Those are things you have to be clear about. Again, be very sure because this is the pitch you're going to make to the lender so that the lender understands that, you know, do you want uh, to pay for inventory? Do you want to pay for a marketing campaign? Do you want to acquire another business? Do you want to, uh, to take care of payroll, to buy commercial real estate? Talk to me about that. You can also choose a business loan. So after you nail down why you need a loan, figure out how much you need. You want to take an honest look at your credit worthiness, okay, both personally and uh, business-wise. You want to explore your lending options, and after that, you can uh, decide and apply. I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another section of the Awesome Sweetie, the awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. We are still having a conversation today about uh, the seven big blunders you need to avoid if you want to uh, be approved quickly for a no-doc business loan. Number six, legal setup. So altering the business structure is a big mistake. So let's say you just started, uh, you started the application uh, as, a, let's say, a, a sole proprietorship or a, as an LLC. And in between, you change to an S Corp or a C Corp or an ALP. Now, I'm not saying this is bad. Hear me out. This is not bad. The thing is that if you do restructuring days before the loan application, this might send a signal to the lender that, hey, listen, this could be this could be a problematic uh, company because you are sending the wrong signal about the business leadership to the lender. Because the lenders want to see stability in the business in terms of the vendors that you regularly work with and so on. They want to see also stability in terms of leadership. They want to see stability in terms of uh, the internal structure, the internal dynamics in the business. Okay, This is really important. Now, this could seem like a non-issue to, the, to, uh, to you as a business owner, but to the lender, this could be very important. So let me give you an example. If you are a, if you are a sole proprietorship, it is good not to change the type of uh, structure you have before applying. Okay, and uh, and obviously it's not even good to be a sole proprietorship if you want to get a no doc business loan because there are uh, there are other uh, dimension to the whole equations that make it very uh, very in a, you know let's say improper. We advise folks on this show to always make sure if you are applying for a business loan to have a legit business so you can preserve your personal assets. Okay, so when we talk about business legal structure, we are talking about how you are, how you register your business at the state level, but also at the federal level. In other words, how you file your taxes. Okay, obviously, business registration happens at the state level, but it carries consequences at the federal level, especially when it comes to taxes. Really important. So when we talk about business uh, legal structure, those this is important because for our taxes, liability. Paperwork, the hierarchy, okay, registration, fundraising, and uh, there are some potential consequences for choosing the wrong structure, okay? So factors to consider before choosing a business structure, you want to think about flexibility, very important, complexity, liability, taxes, yeah, control, okay, capital investment, because, you know, some, uh, some business structures or more expensive to set up than others. And also think about licenses, permits, and, and uh, regulations. So here you have it. Mystic number seven, loan terms. Loan terms. Not reading the loan terms before signing. And this is another important one. So let's say you are lucky enough to be approved, okay? Or you even before you applied. Because when you before you apply, there are some fine prints. And those fine prints are really important. Now, you don't have to read fine prints for credit cards, for personal credit cards, 
for our business credit cards for that matter. Yeah, okay, because nobody reads them. That's understandable. But for business loans, especially for no doc business loans, you may have uh, high APRs, a lot of penalties, a lot of fees. There are buried in there, buried in the fine prints. So you want to take some time to rate the fine prints. The thing is that if you have uh, no knack for business legalese, you have no idea what is written there. Ask someone. Ask someone. Okay, it's always good to to be sorry to be to be uh, cautious now than than sorry later. Right? That those are really important. So you want to actually make sure that you read the, the fine prints. You understand what exactly you are signing on. It's important. So you want to actually, uh, if there are terms that you don't understand, ask the lender to explain the terms, to re-explain. Okay. And uh, if you're not satisfied with uh, those terms, tell them during the uh, during the application process or during the um, during the, the review process. Okay. Money, 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 money. The, the terms will actually impact the amount of money you receive, but also the amount of money you pay back, okay? In terms of the principal loan amount, the interest, and the constellation of fees you might be required to pay. So, boss, I really, I really believe that you have to pay attention here, okay? It's important. So, when we talk about business loan terminology, there are things you might see in the fine prints that are critical. For example, the APR, the uh, amortization. The balloon payments, okay, the bridge, the bridge loan, the cosigner, if there is one, okay, the credit reports, the debt instruments, the debt to income ratio, this could be an important element also, your FICO score, gross income, interest payments, loan commitments, okay. I'm just throwing out a bunch of terms here because those terms are quintessential that you need to understand them. You know, things like origination fee, personal guarantee, prime rate, principal and interest, promissory note, refinance transaction, uh, refinance transaction, repayment period, okay, unsecured loan. So here you have it. There are, there are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of loans out there. There are a lot of terms out there that you really need to clear, to have a clear idea about. Very important. <music> Thank you so much, boss, for your attention to this conversation. I really appreciate it. I was talking to you about no doc business loan, seven mistakes, seven big mistakes you need to absolutely avoid if you want to get uh, approved the first time around. So we talked about no clarity on loan proceeds, no clarity on credit ratings, no business plan, no clear financials for yourself, picking the wrong loan. Having the wrong legal setup or changing the legal setup days before the, the loan or, you know, and uh, not understanding the loan terms. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. I will see you next time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous.